actually work during the day. I know if you want to do that. This is the best fly for spring. If it's not an egg yep. fly, this is the best fly for spring. Exactly. So the next one is, I call it the Hubs Hex. And it's just a simple hex nymph for fishing for steelhead. And like Brian said, probably in the spring is when this is the most ideal from now through April. Um, it resembles a lot of things, even not just a hex fly, but sometimes I think they hit it because it even looks like a little par with the eyes on here. I fish this a lot under a, a strike indicator. Um, you can chuck and duck it, and you can even tie it bigger and swing it. Like if you wanted to swing it for trout or for steelhead, you could tie it on a little longer shank hook. One thing about this fly too, when you're fishing it, always let it swing out before you bring it into cast. You'll find that the fish love to take this fly as it's starting to come up to the surface and the end of your swing, whether you're indicator fishing, chuck and ducking, always let that line come around you so it gets tight towards the end and you'll find you get a lot of hookups on this nymph. And a lot of it too is because it's kind of like a streamer. I put the flank feather in it again, kind of like we did with the wood duck. I added some mallard flank in it just to give it more of that movement. So it's a lot like a wet fly in general too, you know, like you would fish for trout. For this fly, you want to use kind of a, a longer nymph hook, like a 1X. Usually I use a number six for the hook itself. Heavy wire, because you're fishing for steelhead, you know, you're fishing around logs, bigger fish. This is Grizzly Marabou, and I use tan. Just want to get a nice long fiber. Now to tie this on, I'm just going to basically tie it the length of the shank. See how I do that? I'll just kind of measure it up because I don't want it super long like so because it's going to end up following around the hook again like we talked about earlier with that spay fly. So I'm just going to go the length of the shank. And this is the top of the feather. Make sure you have the top. So this would be the bottom of it, the buffer, you know, lighter color hue. Just like that. Now the biggest key is we don't want to cut this. What we're going to do is we're going to fold this back and just make a couple wraps over top of it. So it's just sitting like that. We're, for the body, we're going to use two different color lace dub. So we're just going to use, this is the brown ice dub. And I'm just going to dub this on with my fingers. Just kind of taper it so you're starting small towards the back. And kind of work your way down the thread a little bit thicker. going to take a smaller mallard flank you don't want one too long just kind of think about this size
Now at this point, you could continue going towards the eye of the hook, but we're gonna put the eyes on, the little bead, plastic bead eyes, basically. Or you can use mono eyes. That way you can kind of judge, you know, how much hook you have to work with so you don't, you know, overstuff the eye with material. We're going to take some tan ice stub and just a little bit. And we're going to kind of wrap it towards the head. profile and so you're not overcrowding the eyes just like that and then I'm gonna come up front then what I do is I take this mallard flank and I kind of split it apart so you're almost giving this thing fins like so and then I'll pull my marabou right over the top like that and then that's where you're gonna get the movement out of these. These are little flyo plumes, and if you've ever seen like a real wiggler in a bait shop, it just sits there and flutters. The gills on the top of it. And that's it. Pretty simple process. And you could tie a lot of different flies with the same steps. Like buggers for trout in the summer, damselfly nymph. And that's it.